It's finally time to start riveting all of the subassembly to the right elevator skin. So we're going to start with riveting the 703 to the 704. Then we're going to rivet our doublers and these brackets to the 702 rear spar. Then we'll continue on with the 709 to the rear spar as well as the weldment. And then we're going to rivet this assembly to the spar. Once all that's done, we'll rivet the 713. Just the first two holes here into the skin. Then we'll wedge this assembly into the el elevator. And then we'll rivet everything around the edges. All right, the right elevator rivet assembly was pretty straightforward. I'm going to keep it pretty simple. It's going to basically be a sped up video of me riveting everything here. I'll just give you a voiceover to give you something to listen to. There's a couple things I'll kind of explain on the way, but for the most part, everything went together really well. I am using the pneumatic squeezer here. For these doublers and reinforcement plates, it worked amazingly well with three different length rivets, being able to just have it set to a 430 seconds rivet diameter and squeeze all the different lengths and have no issue. Made it so much faster than having to reset the shank for a traditional pneumatic squeezer uh, or even a hand squeezer for each length of rivet. So far, I've been really happy with it. Still a little different getting used to the foot pedal. Uh, I'll get a video out talking about it at some point here. Here I'm uh, putting the weldment on. Initially you'll see that I'm trying to use the squeezer just because it's always obviously easier to, to squeeze rivets than buck them. Unfortunately I just didn't really have the space so I'm going to go ahead and buck these rivets. So you'll see me pull out the rivet gun here and just buck those 12 rivets. I think I squeezed maybe two or three of them before I decided it was going to be easier to just buck the rest. Same thing, since I had the bucking gun out, I just bucked the uh, other end together as well. It's faster than getting the squeezer on some of those. I would recommend before putting that 713 on, going ahead and doing the edge rolling on your leading edge that you'll have to roll later on. It'll make that process a whole lot easier. When I went to roll those leading edges, it caused a lot of headache trying to get that thing, that edge rolled. And I, I'll show that in the left elevator video coming up just to kind of further explain that if you're not quite sure what I mean. From here on out, once you got the spar in place, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, blocking your view a little bit with my head here momentarily, but very straightforward just getting the rivets in and setting them all the way. Again, with that pneumatic squeezer on this row of rivets really doesn't make a, a difference. They're all the exact same length, so no different than a typical pneumatic squeezer. You can kind of see my right foot reaching behind me to the foot pedal that I've got. That's the one maybe awkward thing about the pneumatic squeezer is just having that foot pedal. But honestly, it goes together pretty well. I'm getting pretty comfortable with it. And here I'm just closing up the ends. No real tricks, just uh, as I get to the trailing edge of the ends, I had just run out of space. I was able to set the top rivet, uh, the very last top rivet on the trailing edges of both sides, but then I didn't have enough space between the shop head of the top rivet to get that squeezer in there to get the bottom rivet. So I just did a, a pull rivet on that bottom. This is where I'll leave this video. Feel free to like, subscribe, uh, comment below if you have any questions, and I'll see you shortly.